Hey, how's it going guys? My name is Daniel aka Hashlips and in today's video, I'm going to be showing you what to do when you have a set of data, but something is missing and you need to fix it and there's a lot of them. How do we go about doing this with Node.js? So the problem that we have is we might have a set of images which isn't really named correctly to our liking. We would like to have them in the order maybe 125.png. Now we can use a bulk renaming tool. There are a lot of them out there, but it's better to do it in code because it's way more cooler. Apart from that, the reason why we're also going to be coding is because there needs to be some changes made inside of this JSON file over here. And this you cannot do with the bulk rename tool. So let's go ahead and write our custom code to fix this metadata, making it perfect for a collection that we can launch on the blockchain. First things first, make sure you have Node.js installed. If you don't, go to this URL and get it for your operating system. Grab yourself an IDE. I'm using Visual Studio Code and let's jump right in. And open Visual Studio Code and then go and find that folder. Now you might not have this, but I'm just choosing a folder where I have another uh, two folders inside here. And basically it contains the images that I've shown. And these are just references. So I also have a metadata folder, which contains some metadata. Now, notably, my metadata does not have anything in the image field. It is empty. Now you could argue and say, well, I can just update these manually. And yes, you can, but not if there's thousands of these. And usually with generative collections, you get thousands of images and metadata files. So we're going to write a tool first off to rename the images and then update the metadata with new images as well as an extra attribute. For now, let's go ahead and close these two folders and then right click, create a new file, and let's call it, this is the rename.js. To make sure it works, let's just console.log, um, maybe hi, like this, and let's save the file, go into the terminal up here, and then create a new terminal. Now, let's type in node, and then rename.js, and say enter. Here you can see that hi has been returned, meaning that we can run this file. Now that we know this works, what we're going to do is actually start by importing our file system library. This library over here allows us to read and write to files. Next, what I want to do is actually get the arguments. Um, so I'm going to just say these are the args. And the arguments is something that we can pick up by entering it in the console down here. Let me show you what I mean. We can depend on the process to actually get the args for us. So we can get it by doing this and we can just say that's fine. If we console.log the args out here at the top now to see what is being returned. So let's go ahead and just run it again in the terminal. Press up arrow if you want to run the previous command or type in node rename.js and press enter we get returned an array. Now the array contains kind of the bin file of node as well as the rename.js that we just ran. Now, if we go ahead and run this again and just type in hello at the end and we run it, we can see there's another argument appended. And we would like to grab every argument apart from the first two. So how do we do that? Well, in here, we can just add the slice method and then add two over there. That way, if we run this again, we should just be simply getting hello as the first argument. We can also say hello, hi, and we'll get the two arguments appended to our file name. We want to do this so that we can make our utility a bit more dynamic choosing files and folders to rename. Now that we know that the args is going to give us back an array, we can create a new constant variable. And this variable we're going to call the uh, input maybe folder. And then for the input folder, what we're going to do is say this is the args and it's the first argument. 
So technically, this um, variable over here, if we entered in images, it would be images, just that, because we're taking the first index. We can now point to some kind of folder, but we don't really have the directory. For that, I'm going to create a new variable called dir for directory for short. And in this instance, what I'm going to do is something special. So I'm going to concatenate two things. I'm going to concatenate the dir name as well as, and how we're going to do this is the input folder. So this is going to be the full directory to this image folder. And you'll see it if I now go ahead and console.log the directory over here and I go ahead and run it, we can see that this gets printed out. User, hash tips, desktop, and then the images. And this is exactly what we want. Maybe we can just append a forward slash here as well, just to make it easier to use later on. Now that we know where the files exist, we can create a new directory and this time I'm going to call this maybe the input files, like so. We're going to make use of the file system and we're going to read the directory, but we're going to read it synchronously. Now we need to specify where we're going to pass in our variable and we're also going to sort it. The reason for this is because I find that different operating systems read the files differently. We will work around this in our loop, but for now, just know that we need to sort it as well. In the input files over here, I'm going to console.log it out so we can see if we now go and run our program, what do we get? Here we go. We get this array that looks like this. And exactly, this is our file system on the left here. So we can see there is all the images listed in this array. Now let's give us some space and create a for loop. Now instead of a for loop we can use the for each so we can take that and say for each and what are we looping over? Well for each file we're going to give this anonymous function and let's actually put the console.log in here and log each file out. Now if we run it we get the individual files like so. Now we get to manipulate the files as we loop over them. The utility of this file is to rename. So we're going to make use of the file system again, but this time we're going to say rename sync. Now rename takes in a few different parameters. If you just want to hover over it, you can see we have to specify the old path and the new path. So let's go ahead and do that. We can actually um, do it like this again because we will need the directory like so. And we will also need the current file that we are pointing to, this variable over here. The next attribute or the next um, argument will basically be the new path. Now, here we need to decide what we want to rename these files to. Having a look at the current structure, we can see we've got this underscore at each given uh, interval at the end of each name. So, for instance, we've got underscore 3.png, underscore 5.png. Now, I would like it purely to be 5.png, 4.png, and so on. So, for my second argument, I'm going to then pass in the directory, but on the file, I want to actually split this by the underscore, and then I want to pop this off. Now, by splitting, you get returned an array, and by popping off, you pop, up, pop off the last value in that array, and that gets returned. So by doing this, hopefully and saving this now, we are ready to go to rename all of these files to their respective numbered PNGs. So if we go ahead and run the program again, check what happens, and there we go. They are now renamed to 12345.png, and that is all we need. That is very cool, 
and you can try this out for your rename script. Now that we've renamed the images, let's go ahead and rename our metadata. So all we need to do inside the terminal is specify the metadata folder over here. When we run it, we should see them being renamed too. So now we already have the very first step and these now should align. And our next step would be to actually update the inner metadata over here through another script. I see that the store file was created, which I'm going to delete. This is just something that Mac OS does really irritating, but oh well. Now we can go and let's close this. We have our rename.js. I'm going to actually copy and paste it and then rename this to the update script. We're basically going to make a use of the same structures over here. So there's no need in rewriting it. We can also, because we are reusing it, maybe put that in a separate module and reuse it like that as well. But let's just go ahead and change the metadata. What do we need to do? Well, most of our changes are going to happen here in our loop. Let's go ahead and get rid of this. We can maybe leave the console.log just to see the files being logged out. But the very first thing we'll need is two variables. I'm going to define an ID. And how do we get this ID from the file? Well, we have the file. And if you remember correctly last time, we can split by something. So split, and I'm going to split by this period. Then once I have split the period, I don't want to pop because that will remove the last part of an array. I want to shift. So we're going to say, well, let's go and shift. And once we do that, we will get returned the number value from each one of these files. We need the ID to later on know how to save our metadata, but we need the metadata to change in the first place. So let's create a new data um, variable. And this time this is going to be JSON and we're going to pass it from something. Now we get to read each file in this loop. So let's go and use our file system again. And this time we're going to read file sync. Now the file that we want to read is our file, not that one, the lowercase one here that we have here. And now by passing this in, we actually need to pass the full uh, directory. So we can't just do this. We need to specify the directory. So the directory plus our brand new file. Great. Now, this will actually return to us each piece of data containing in these JSON files. Let's go and log the data out and see how it looks. Before you run it, just remember to reference the update.js, not the rename because we're in a new file. And here you can see we get exported the JSON content. Great. In order to update the data, we can now reference the JSON data. For instance, we can now say the JSON data image field needs to be something new. We need it to be the IPFS and then like we used to do, we'll give it a CID forward slash and then we need it to say one dot uh, PNG. Okay. But that's why we need to use the ID. So we'll need to do this, put the ID and then use backticks like so. We can also go ahead and update the name. Currently the name looks like this and maybe I want it to be this, but not have this underscore two. So what I can do is say that my name should be the utopian Renaissance, but with a space and I'm rather going to place my ID in here as well. This will work, but we need to still write the metadata to the file again. To do that, what we'll need to do is use the file system and this time, yes, you guessed it, write file sync. So we've got write file sync and write file sync, as we can see, takes in two parameters again, 
This time, the path which we'll specify is the exact same path that we were reading from. And then we need to JSON stringify. So stringifying the JSON again to make it in string format, we can give this. But then there's something interesting we can add as well. We can add this, which is null, and then two. This will just format the data nicely. And ladies and gentlemen, we are done. We can now simply run this again. And when we do, after running it, we can check the metadata and see that we have a beautifully formatted name as well as an image. Now you can go ahead and run this as many times as you want. Change the CID, change the data, but in the base principle, this is how you build your own utilities with Node.js. I really hope you enjoyed this little tutorial. If you want to see more of this or something different, let me know in the comments. Also, give me a big fat thumbs up if you enjoyed coding along with me. And apart from that, remember to subscribe. But most importantly, have an amazing day. Till next time. Cheers.